We flew them all the way from Phoenix, Arizona and Las Vegas, Nevada on this week's Food Truck Diaries. It's Harrison Rogers, the owner of the UFL Fight League and the UFC legend himself, Frank Mir. And I'm feeding them chicken cutlets, New Jersey style. Let's go. Fellas, what is up? What's the up, legend, bro? Frank Mir, as usual. Harrison, the magnificent wonder, the president of the UFL. <laughs> Boys, look at us. Little LA sun for you. Yeah, Bad politics, good weather. That's why I say about LA. Fucking horrible politics. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't get me started. Don't, don't get me started, started right now. Like, this is not even monetized <laughs> yeah, at all. We, we need to be monetized right now. You and I yeah. start going off about yeah, government. Uh, we're not here to talk about no. politics in LA. Oh, don't get me started, dude. Pissed off now. Fuck. Yeah, Man, sorry, there was my day. I know. I ruined it for <laughs> us. But fellas, you guys, uh, you got a lot going on, man. You did some two busy dudes, busy in the business. And Frank, you know this, and Harrison, I'm sure Frank's giving you some tips on this, but whenever you decide to start a league, you know, Frank's been doing it longer than I have, but I've been around a little bit. It, it's a tough task, man. We've seen a lot of leagues come and go. The thing with the UFL, though, is you guys are doing a little different, a little different than these other leagues and really giving back to the fighters, which is what caught my curiosity and is why I support you guys so much, because you're actually giving back to the fighters. If you want to talk about that with like, you know, we'll get into Frank and Bella fighting, right. which is I'm so excited oh, about. We'll talk well, about we'll, we'll talk about let's keep we'll talk in. about that monster. Right, we'll yeah, talk about right. her in an NIL deal. She's richer than both of us already. But <laughs> uh, with uh, starting a league and the way you're giving back to the fighters, you know, you're talking about health insurance, which most people would say there's a reason why these other major leagues in uh, mixed martial arts doesn't do health insurance because it's kind of a nightmare, right? Oh yeah, no, that's what we're doing right now. But it's so fun to talk about healthcare in a past tense we've done it like so many people you know in this industry talk about oh we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and oh, it'd be really cool if we did this we've done it we had our first event where all of our fighters have health insurance that now they're going into their second camp you know they we have soundbite after soundbite of them being like i feel so much more confident to go hard in the in the training camp because they're covered there and then also what's really different is it's a fighter owned league you know these fighters they got their shares after their ceremonial weigh-in, like, hey, you fought in this first event, you're gonna be taken care of forever with it. Obviously, shares for one event is lower than if you're with us for years and years and years, sure. but it, it'll take care of you as much as you put into it. And so for them to have shares each time they fight, they act differently. You know, when you own something, you treat it differently. And so we had fighters with the F3 drink, you know, after they win and they're all sponsoring. We don't have to tell them to do that because they, they know that they own it. Yeah, it's good. For, what's good for you is good for them. That's awesome. one thing that actually Harrison done a phenomenal job when we first met realizing that like look you know you can be a jack of all trades a master of none is really the expression and you know he's a great businessman but when he started asking about the fight thing i was like all right well let's start putting some key people in certain roles and you know what i mean first we did the first round manager helped us with the first show which worked out as a blessing we were able to have sophia magana come over as our ceo and she's been you know East. amazing you yeah. know and everything from there like we put brian lacy i was like hey you need the commentator you know quentin jackson Tito ortiz brought them in you know gail uh, galen uh, brought him in to help out now it was chief marketing operator operations and so like that was one of the things that first impressed me about harrison was that i was like hey look we got to put these different people to help us out and then he did and then started asking okay what are the problems with the organization what's going on you know we have people like tim sylvia who can't even have his arm fixed you know what i mean you know, i'm like you have guys that fought for years that really helped build a brand on their shoulders legends and yeah. they're not benefited at all from here they can't even go to walmart still without you know taking pictures and can't help their wife with yeah. you know but then there's no financial compensation so right off the bat he figured out a way because those are the thing again like I didn't know how to get health insurance started for a company or do yeah. anything like that. No. He goes, whoa, well, well, that's the problem. He went and got a brokerage. Yeah, business man. He took yeah. care of it. He goes, oh, well, yeah. that part I can handle. So that's one thing I think that we're really doing well at the, uh, you know, uh, Freedom, uh, the United Fight League is that everybody kind of has like, all right, well, I can handle that. That's my field of expertise, you know, from, you know, Quentin all the way down. Uh, and, and taking their role and knowing how to make sure that this is going to be a company that we fix all those issues. That, that again, like, you know, what you talk about, like, it's a sound bite with Jake Paul talking about, oh, we're going to start a fight, Lee, or, or, or a, uh, you know, a, a union. union. I've heard that. It stops there, times. man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. it. That's all that ever happens. Hey, whatever happened with that? And it hits a huge, you know, sound bite, but no one ever follows through. Like, we actually now, it's no longer a sound bite. Like, our fighters have health insurance. Yeah. You know I mean? Like, it's not, we're going to, so we have, we did. Yeah. Know? 
so yeah, far. So I, yeah, I think that's a way to make a splash, that's for sure, in this sport, because, you know, Frank's been doing it longer than I have, but we've both been around the block where, it, uh, you know, this isn't even something I even thought of, where fighters get health insurance or yeah. anything like that. And you're so confident in UFL, I mean, your own daughters yeah. can be fighting. In- I don't know any more stamp of approval I can tell people, like, hey, man, yeah, you, you, know, know, look, you know, look, we all get, we're all brand ambassadors, right? Yeah. You know, I make money, hey, I drink this, I yeah. take this. You know, and there's some guys out there that really, it's like, you really, yeah. hey, man, like, you know, cameras aren't watching. Do you really like yeah. this product? You know, and I've talked to guys, it's like, nah, man, I just, they put money in my account, yeah. you know? So for people to sit there go, well, you know, UFL pays you, you're, you're an owner in the company. Uh, of course, you're pushing it. I'm all, yeah, but I'm actually going to put my daughter yeah, yeah. on the fight card. She's actually be one of our fighters. I don't know of any way to really tell anybody how much I approve of a company. I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't know how many fights I have left in me. Maybe only one more. Maybe, you know, who sees how that one goes, you know? But uh, there's only be one time that I can fight for with my daughter on a car. Yes. You know, where that works out. I'm like, oh, well, I know where I want to have it done at, where it's going to be the best opportunity for her to be taken care of in the best way, and that's here under the brand. And especially with Bella, it's not like an options thing, because you look at her oh, skill level. Yes. She, she could have went anywhere yeah. in the world. I mean, Bella is such a nightmare. I mean, let's get this straight just so the audience knows. Bella signed a NIL deal yeah. with the UFC, correct? No, yeah, the UFC already. I mean, and that's one thing we're doing that, you know, like we actually, it's, you know, it's been a point of contingency a little bit with Harrison. I'm, I'm going to show him how to deal with stress. Yes. When our relationship said and done, I'm going to turn him around because <laughs> we all have our strong suits and stress is mine. And he knows how yeah, to handle stress. Not necessarily better. his at the moment, yeah. but he's going through. Most fighters at Frank's level, we handle stress pretty well. It's crazy. Yeah. So, we, you know, Bella's going to do another fight on the fight pass before she moves on, you know, uh, and fights on our card. You know, so she wants to get two fights in this summer. And so that being said, there's a lot of moving parts going on. But yeah, Bella, look, we sat down and had lunch with Dana. Dana's, you know, I don't know if there's a bigger fan you know, between Harrison or Dana on, on Bella, you know. He knows what she is and, and, and basically said it very, uh, you know, poetically, you know. In fact, it was actually an argument between me and Jen on whether Bella goes to college or not. You know, Jen was like, why go and go wrestle in college and blow your knee out, mm-hmm. rip your shoulder, and you're doing it for free or for a scholarship, right? She's all, go make money now, you know what I mean? Like yeah. right off the bat, and then pay for your college if you want to. Yeah, where were you at on it? I was kind of, at first I was completely, again, I want to do what Bella wants to do. Bella's like, I want to really push the wrestling as far as I can, see if we can go to the Olympics or a world title. Love that for her. I'm like, that's awesome, Bella. And that's, to me, it's not a step backwards. We know the sport of MMA, a wrestling pedigree like that, we know what that's only going to help her out. Especially you know? in her division. It's Correct. Absolutely dominant. You know, you see the wrestling, it's just phenomenal, right? And then you add striking and submissions on that, you have the most dangerous fighter in the world, right? Uh, so I was like, well, whatever makes her happy. But then Jennifer brought the point, she goes, okay, we'll talk about Cage. Cage won his second state title now as a sophomore in high school. He's a state champion football team, one of the top four in the country. She goes, Cage <laughs> is playing blood. football, right? And he gets the opportunity to go pro. Do you have him stay in college or go pro? Like, well, no, he would turn pro. She goes, wait a minute, so you're going to say that for football? I'm like, different. It's different. Okay, <laughs> so you don't agree with me. So I was like, well, you Jennifer, the same here. football so dangerous. Everybody, I mean, a practice, you tear your knee and it's yeah. over with you. Right? And there's so much competition and whatnot. I'm like, with the wrestling, I'm like, I get it. Could she get injured? Absolutely. I don't think the injuries are anywhere near themselves. Close. And for what it's going to give her without a college experience, the experience of wrestling on a world level At like that. At that level, the experience. It's only going to add. So it's like, so she can go fight five fights right now and go make anywhere between ten dollars to $50,000 and, and work her way up. And then maybe her eighth, ninth fight from now, you know, she's in, you know, six-digit numbers. Yeah. Um, or she can go win an Olympic gold medal and her first fight, as soon as that's over with, is Big a six-digit. You know what I mean? Like, maybe seven figures. Also, you know? I, I wow. would say for your that's wife, you know, don't shoot the messenger, but I would say <laughs> fighting is a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Football's a sprint. If, as yeah. soon as you get to the 100%. NFL, get short your ass to the NFL. Short lifespan. NBA too, it's yeah, yeah. a sprint. Get your short ass Yeah, 100%. So, but the good thing was we just sat in the office with Dana, and Dana was like, you know what, hey, she has the rest of her life to fight. She's so young, and this time she was 18. And he's like, look, she has the rest of, no, she can, you know, he even made a joke, he goes, Point to me, he goes, he's still fighting. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like come on. You know I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, you, 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 you're you're on, right? Like you're in your forties yeah. and you can still fight. You can't go and wrestle. I'm like, no, you're right. If I, you know, the, so her to go backwards. So he was actually the tipping point, and then you know, taking care of the fact that you know, well, you know, he actually alleviated the issue with Bella in the college for tuition. He's like, well, now we got to pay for her tuition because obviously the scholarships aren't full rides for wrestling, and they have, I think the college team has about six scholarships, and they divide them up. You know, and so Bella got a good, a decent one for, for what wrestling is, yeah. but it's not a full. They're like, we got you. No UFC problem. got you? Yeah. 
That's the that was that's right it. off the bat. They're like, hey, we got that's you, whatever she wants. Is. And she can go fight wherever. Like, right, you know, he, he didn't give me any speculation, so, you know, of like, well, we want her. We don't want her to go here. He's like, hey, look, go get experience. Go win titles. He goes, go collect and a bunch of titles. And then come here. He come goes, here when you're ready. Well, and that was his point, too, that I brought up. I don't want to be overconfident. I always bring up Lomachenko as an example. Lomachenko, the greatest, one of the greatest boxers of all time. The guy was, what, 396 or 97 and won as an amateur. Yes. Multiple gold medalists in the Olympics, world champion. He lost once to uh, the Russian gold medalist and yes. came back and beat him twice. His first fight, he's like, I'm going to be pro and fight for title on my first fight. Goes and fights in the guy's home, uh, Salido, and fights him in Texas. Lost. Lost. Now, I've heard that maybe, I never saw the fight, but they're like, oh, well, you know, he was allowed to, the guy, they, they yeah. wouldn't let him get away. I'm like, but, but the problem is, you guys were so confident with his ability that he's a world beater, and he was, that like, that overconfidence cost you that zero. Especially in fighting. But also, back to that point, his dad, when he was uh, young and he was like ready to go on the amateur circuit, his dad made him do ballet for, I think, four years. You told and told me that last time, yeah. Well, it was like, I know he's a song you need to work too, on your yeah. footwork yeah. and do ballet. Whoa. So he's like, slow your roll. It's a yeah. marathon, not a sprint. Yep. Fighting's a marathon, not a it sprint. Is. And so that's why I don't want to be Lomachenko's situation, where Bella, we think, oh, well, she can walk through everybody. And once we go to the UFC, all of a sudden we find out maybe fighting in front of you know, 15 to 20,000 people is a stressful situation. Who knows? We don't know. I don't know yet. You I don't, don't want to find out I don't want to find out that. Madison Square Garden. And then where do you go from there? We're already in the UFC. We're 20 years old. Do we go? Do we leave and come back? Yeah, it's not the end of the world. You could. But that's a it's tough narrative. It's not the, way to, it. not the yeah. way to do it. Let's take a little break from chatting with the boys at UFL because this episode of Food Truck Diaries is brought to you by the one, the only, the tried and true on it. That's right. Listen, your boy here does a million jobs. I do way too many podcasts, then I'm on tour, then I'm a dad. I'm nonstop. I need all the mental help I can get. That's why I depend on Alpha Brain, the best nootropic on planet Earth. They've sold over a million bottles nationwide. On it, so confident in uh, Alpha Brain that they will give you your money back. No, re no return necessary. Go ahead and keep it. Share it with a friend. That's how confident they are in their Alpha Brain, the best nootropic ever. But you've heard of Alpha Brain. Everyone, their mom knows Alpha Brain. What about Alpha Brain Black? What you know about that black Alpha Brain? That's right. It's a highly concentrated Alpha Brain that I use for little pills. Your boy's creating all sorts of apps. I'm doing computer programming. I don't, I don't know where it comes from. It's Alpha Brain Black. That's how good it is. Aids in mental processing. It's caffeine free. All right. Helps with the flow state. Promotes focus. Supports memory. You think more clearly under stress. You react a little more quick like a cat. All right. You want to be more like a cat? Get some Alpha Brain Black. All right. On it also offers crazy workout equipment. If you've never heard of it, you're living under a rock. You're talking about kettlebells, steel club maces, sandbags, yoga mats. They got streaming fitness for your thick self. And if you need nutrition, to get that summer body, it's a thick boy summer. It's always thick boy summer, but not too thick, right? You got to get your stuff together. So that's why they have all the best nutrition. We're talking about creatine. They got freaking all sorts of delicious stuff like protein powders, warrior bars. They got it all. Whatever you're looking for, they got multivitamins. They got total gut health. Everything you need to get your thick self in shape on it has it for you. But if you want to try the best nootropic on the planet, you got to go to onit.com slash shab, S-C-H-A-U-B. You save 10% off all the workout gear. Uh, clothing, uh, kettlebells, streaming fitness, and Alpha Brain, Alpha Brain Instant, the Alpha Brain Shot, the Alpha Brain Regular, the Alpha Brain Black that I told you about. All right, that's onit.com slash shop, 10% off. Now let's get back to the program. But I, I'll never, Ed, Ed Soros told me this because I remember when I was fighting, I was training at Black House, and uh, they offered me someone. I was like, man, I just got the call from my manager, and Ed knows the game forever. And I was like, man, I don't like this matchup, boy. He goes, what, what are you talking about? I don't like the matchup, man. I feel like this guy, there's better matchups. He goes, well, UFC? He goes hold on, you're in the UFC. I, I know he goes, I tell my guys all the same thing. When you get to the UFC, unless you can find a way to beat anybody they offer you, you're not ready for the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's like, you take that fight, man. Yep. You, there's, I can look at that guy and find ways for you to beat him. Mm -hmm. He's like, but I tell my guys, do not fight in the UFC unless you're ready yep. to face all of them. He's like, it's not a feeder league. You're not, they're not going to give you any buildups. They're doing a little better now. Like they've learned the lesson with like Darren Till or certain guys. You see what they've done with Sugar Sean O'Malley and uh, Patty Pimlet, where it might be a little, you know, they're building Sugar up, they're building Patty up. But it used to be, you know, how, I mean, your first yeah, fight, Lee, your first fucking fight. I'm fighting, yeah. Insane. You used to look at my Wikipedia, it's Murderer's Row. You know I mean? Mine too. I mean, yeah, dude, yeah. I came out thousand fighter and six months later I'm fighting Gabriel Gonzaga. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck am I doing? Yeah. You know? So it's like, you got to be ready to go. So for Bella, 
I think it's dope that Dana, he knows this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. go fight in UFL, or maybe she's the king of UFL, and then can come over eventually. Yeah, go collect ready. titles. Go yeah, collect go collect titles. And in that situation, I can pick opponents. I can sit there and go, well, you know what? I'd prefer this girl over that girl. This we have more to gain here. We have nothing to gain. Well, this let's one. fight a South Paul. Yeah, let's you know, fight we, a straight we, I can move it around. Like, hey, you know what? Yeah. This time, let's find out how you do against a high level wrestler. That's how it is. Let's go ahead and try this yeah. out. We're going to do this girl. But when you go to the UFC, it's like, all right, who are we fighting? Oh, you, there really is you, no negotiation. It's like, hey, who are we fight? Because you know, if you say no or you pull back, you're, yeah. you're done. Yeah. I, look, I said no one time in my whole career, and that was because the opponent I was going to face. We had the same circle of friends. Like basically, his head trainer was one of my groomsmen in my wedding. Jeez. So I was like, dude, he and I are gonna understand this. Yeah. We punch each other in the gym all the time. I'm like, but everybody around us is gonna be weird when this is said and done. So at first I said, no. Oh, really? No. The only time in my life I ever tried to get out of a yeah. fight. I was like, ah, can I do a repick? You know, somebody yeah, yeah. else. They're like. Well, you know, we don't know when we get you back on the card. Like, basically, you're going to sit. We're going to shelf you for over They're a gonna year. They're going to punish you, yeah. Oh. Same thing. I mean, without saying it. You know, like, oh, well, we might not get back to Everyone's you. Everyone's pretty might be tied up. Before. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hmm, man, if you don't take this opportunity. <clears throat> I was like, oh, damn. So, I was like, all right, well, hey, never mind. I'll take the fight. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in. You, you know know be ready to go. Yeah, you was, can't say no. Roy? Yeah, it was Roy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, same thing with me with uh, Matreon. I remember because me, me and Mitch Rillen came out the Ultimate Fighter and they called me to fight him in Toronto. I'm like, UFC 165. I'm like, what? I'm going to fight Matt. That's my buddy. Like, well, he told us he's ready to tear your head off. I'm like, Matt said that? Like, yeah, I'm like, uh, you can't he's have anybody else. Roy. So I talked to Roy. I called find out. Roy's like, they told me you wanted to fight me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I called Matt. I'm like, hey, you want to tear my head off? He's like, no. I told him no. I'm like, I told them no. <laughs> so they, they got get, the same script. Yeah, they get you, rinse and repeat. They, rinse yeah, and repeat. they've been through this before. But what I think is uh, great, too, and Hirton, you'll learn this is, I'm sure you already learned it. You don't have to compete with the UFC. There's enough eyeballs. There's enough tickets to be sold. There's enough fights. There's a big enough fan base where it's you don't have to. UFC is not your competition. We, we were literally you guys talking have about to, that no, on the car over. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were saying, like Bella, we know that a lot of our studs are going to go to UFC, and we love that because, that, you know, we're a new commodity. We're building a community that we think is the long game that, you know, when fighters own something after 10 years and you have all this stock, we're gonna have the talent and we're gonna have the pool of people who the accolade of being a UFL champ, hopefully will be just as proud to say as a UFC. It's not gonna happen overnight. No. And we know that we're not trying to compete with that, but we're building, we think the future of MMA that it's more of like an NBA model where yeah. the players are taken care of, the athletes are, they see more of a life after we wanna be with this. and. And so, yeah, we're not, we don't look at it as a competition. We, we, there's enough meat on the bone for us all to eat right now, but we think we're the and future. And I'm sure just having those kind of goals and offering even those benefits, it's not going to be hard to recruit these young prospects. Oh, no, already as far as not being in the UFC, our pay is, and the way we take care of fighters, they're really – there is no intelligent second choice. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like if you can get the UFL before you go to the UFC, 100%. Yep. And really my goal is part of my, you know, my contribution to the company is I want to make it to where Bella right now wants to be a UFC champ. I'm not stopping that from her, you know what yeah. I mean? But I would like it by the time three, four years come around, I would like to make that kind of like... Tougher decision. Yeah, you know, maybe yeah. I'll go and get the UFL champ first and maybe I want to keep them. Maybe I don't want to go to the UFC. Yeah. And maybe she still does. But I don't want it to be that you're not doing me a favor, but I want to make it to where the company and the organization has enough, you know, uh, wow. recognition and just, you know, pedigree that it's like, oh, okay, well, actually, you know what? Being the pride champ, being the UFC champ, you know what I mean? Like there was a time where, you know. I was gonna say, I'll do you one better because I think you're the only guy who can pull this off, both of you guys, especially your relationship with Dana White. How dope would it be if Bella's the first UFL champ and UFC champ simultaneously? Oh, yeah. Because there's super, super fights make all the sense in the oh, world. Yeah, totally. I'd love for- You see it happening so much. I would love for yeah. Bellator to have some of their guys fight UFC. Let's find out who's the baddest. You were literally they have some about great that. champions. AJ McKee. If we yeah. could have done that during 2001, 2002, oh. with Pride was oh, their bro. peak, you know what I mean? You know, Fedor with, with, with the with best era, you know what I mean? Crow Cop, and they, at that point, Quentin was over there. There was a lot of debate who's better, Randy, you know, because Randy was, you know, stud yeah. there, you know, and Tito. And, that's when they're going to do uh, you know, uh, Randy versus uh, uh, Fedor. Remember yeah. that? that was like this close to happening. Yeah, you know, and then we got closer to doing it a little bit when when, when Chuck went over and competed in the tournament. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like, well, how great would that have been to have a night of fights with like, all right, cool, you guys heavyweight champs. It's our Super Bowl. Heavyweight yeah. Once a year. Once a year. Light yeah. heavyweight all the way down. Let's just do a team bracket, yeah, team UFC, team pride. If we could have done something like that, could you imagine the spectators? Because Bellator We'd still be talking about it. Oh, agree. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be legendary. Bellator did it with Ryzen. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Am amazing, man. I mean, 
the outcome was a little one-sided, but yeah, it just shows you Bellator don't mess around. Bell, yeah. Bellator has some legit, <clears throat> legit fighters, man, across the board. Right now, you know, the, with kind of the chaos that's going on with people, you know, France Naganyu or whoever that are now or Nick Diaz. UFL is like trying to make a move. You know, I, I don't know if we're allowed to say this because I don't know if he's in the contract and technically as a promoter, but as a podcaster and stuff, I want to talk to these people and say, you've talked about healthcare before. You've talked about having your own sponsorship. Referring right? to Nate UFL. Francis? Yeah. You can talk about them. They're free agents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and Nick, you can't. Nate what? and uh, Francis, you can't. But how cool would a Francis Naganyu, Ryan Bader, like I know that's totally different agent, but and he's and Bader is with, uh, but he's Bellator. not gonna be with Bellator forever. He, but he's a current champ. Yeah, and he's, you know, Francis is a free agent. Yeah, <laughs> Prince free agent. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I, I dig it, man. I like where, I like where you guys are headed. Because we well, just need to make some moves. But I agree. All these moves are making me hungry. <laughs> Let me fill. What is this? Some chicken cutlets. Yeah. Now you just a food truck. This is a food van. Food van. That's food though, right? It has food <laughs> and hopefully not kids in the back. Whenever I see a van, I always get <laughs> creeped out. But let's uh, let's feed you guys and continue this talk, man. I, I think you sold me on the classic. You said that's the n number one. Definitely the best seller. I guess it's number two, but cool. Keep it easy. Yeah. Uh, I'll do the buffalo, sure. and then also do the spicy Caesar salad. Okay. But number four, the pickle rick. Is pickle rick. Sure. Yeah, I just gotta try you it. Got it. Thanks, fellas. No worries. Came in as an underdog, but now I'm on my way. Stayed up every single night and hustled every day. I've been going so hard. Now I'm on my way. Like, oh my God. All right, boys, let's dig in. Here's some already dug into his. The, uh, that, that looks pretty nice. The chicken parm. Yeah, that might have been the move. No, I, I, the salad's what? pretty lit, too, though. Yeah, this chicken parm's hard to go wrong with, man. And this is how they do it in Jersey case. Little, little East Coast vibe here. Oh, man, this is awesome. Let's take another short little break here from chatting with the boys at UFL and UFC legend, heavyweight title contender, heavyweight champion, Frank Mayer, the one and only, and our boy Harrison, who's the mastermind behind UFL. Because this episode of Food Truck Diaries is brought to you by Happy Happy Hippo. Happyhippo.com, the best kratom on planet Earth. Something can give you that crazy buzz feeling like if you take like a crazy energy drink or something with a lot of caffeine, like a cup of coffee. Nope, it's going to get you in that mood to get stuff done. Whatever you got for your busy day, that Kratom is going to help you. But you can't just trust any Kratom. That's why I reached out to Happy Hippo and said, hey, how about you guys jump on board all the programming I'm doing because I use your product every day. Now, I use the shot. They have the sour apple shot, the butterscotch shot. They have gummies. They have powders. They have tablets. They got it all. Whatever form you want your perfect Kratom in, they got you covered, man. And here's the cool thing about it. I'm going to give you 20% off. When you go to happyhippo.com, promo code THICK23, that's T-H-I-C-C-C, three C's, 23 all right, if you use that promo code THICK23, you get 20% off for life. Share it with a friend, share it with your mom, your cousins, whoever. You get to try the best Kratom on the planet. All right, that's happyhippo.com, promo code THICK23. Now let's get back to the program. Back to UFL, not the sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know if this is announced, Harrison, but is it August 12th? Is it August 12th? I think we're going to get a lot, of, a lot of mayor. A lot of mayor, a little <laughs> Bella Frank tandem. Is that the plan? It's coming full circle because I don't I don't know if you remember the first episode you were on for our podcast. It was like brought up as like a oh that'd be cool like oh can you imagine Bella Mir fighting with Frank like that'd be epic. It's, it's freaking it. happening. It's happening. It's happening in Phoenix. In Phoenix, August twelfth. We're trying to figure out the logistics because obviously Frank is the commentator and voice of UFL. A lot going on for Frank that <laughs> night. <laughs> And here's the other thing. Mike and gloves. Yeah, <laughs> dude, here's the other thing. He's calling you is, fight. Is Bella going to be the main event? And then, because then you can't be co main event, you know? Honestly, you know what? I'm going to kind of like. Obviously, like, there's a lot that goes behind that wall to sit and talk. But as her father, I want to talk to her. Like, what do you feel most comfortable about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she obviously has a lot of main events ahead of her. Do you want to fight earlier in the night, get yours out of the way? Mentally, you know what I mean? And then, then focus on dad. And then focus on me. And then I'll fight. You know, and I can go corner you while I'm still waiting to fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, you know, like, I would probably prefer to do that. And I think we can, it's an easy sell saying, hey, it's my last fight. 
going on in the main event. Yeah, that'd be cool. Whereas, you know, uh, where Bella, rightfully so, she's going to be the future. Could, she, could we make it to where she's the main event? Yeah, but I just don't know with her because she's going to corner me. It'd make more sense. She kicks off the the, That's the, right. the main card even and if then we corners do, you. Even if we just do a swing bout in between where technically she's a co-main event, swing bout, yeah. and then I fight, you know what I mean, like towards yeah. time in between. You know, but I still think her fighting first would be easier. And then, if actually, even though UFL, we don't do amateur fights on there, we were sitting there in the cage, you know, because my son now has won a second state title and he's training with us and doing boxing now on top of all his wrestling practices, and, you know, and he no loves it. Way. So I was like, hey, do you want to do a amateur fight? Like, we'll have him in the swing? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you want to do an amateur? He's like, well, I'm cornering you and Bell. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, if it's an amateur fight, you want to go out there and give it a shot? Like, you beat this you guy know. in your sleep. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's yeah, be real. Yeah. Uh, you know, it would just make it a, a night of mirrors. You That'd know be mean? nuts. Yeah. He's night into of it? Mirror. Oh, yeah, 100%. It'd yeah. be so funny if you, like, Bella, what are you thinking? And she's like, well, I'm the main event. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I know, but we want to. She's like, no, I don't care. Wait, I'm the main event. Yeah. Yeah. I doubt you'd do that. Nah. But yeah, she it should I, in all reality, it should kick off with her and then you're the main event. Especially I think so. I I, I think for many reasons. Because probably you're yeah, for many, yeah. many reasons. Being being really such a face of UFL, it kinda makes with the poster, you know. But I also have never seen a father daughter duo, so I'd respect whatever you wanted to do. Yeah, at least we're kind of, you know <laughs> crazy. Yeah. And not a lot because LeBron talks about it, he goes he goes, I'm going to retire once I play a game with Bronny, his son. Crazy. You know, his son's getting close there. You know, LeBron's right. up there in age. So you're kind of the first, you know, Le LeBron of, although it's a daughter, so it's, it's even more different. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, it's, it's all exciting, man. You guys got to feel good about it. Oh, it's fun. Well, you know, hey, Bella's doing something she loves. I'm glad that I can provide it for her for a platform. That, you know, it's like you go to work every day, right? And you sit there, oh, my kid's going to follow up in my career. And I can sit there, oh, I'm actually going to make a better work environment than I had. She's going to get a bigger share of the money, uh, be taken care of as far as, you know, I know that, you know, health-wise, if she gets injured leading up to the fight, she's taken care of. Not the things that we've had to deal with, where it's yeah. like, hey, man, how are you feeling? Like, I'd like to go to the doctor, maybe get a cortisone shot, but if I mention it, I might That's get true. the fight pulled for me, and then i got to pay for it. I'm covered in my own money. I'm sure you've had some nightmare experiences, oh, Frank. Like, I, I, had a, I had a fight where I was fighting in, uh, I think it was my third pro fight, and I was fighting in... Uh, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, I forget where it was, by George Mason University, and I fly out there. I knocked the dude out, and as I knocked him out, it my thumb exploded, compound fracture exploded out. And they, I think they paid me like four grand, maybe three grand, two and two for that fight. And then I was like, hey man, I need to go to the doctor. My hand's bleeding everywhere, but my dad and brother came to the show. And like, no, let's go see the exhibits in Washington, D.C., like the Lincoln Memorial and stuff. So I'm walking around, I'm like lightheaded, I'm like, dad, I need to go to the doctor. We go to the doctor and I, they just didn't cover it. So I had to pay for. I didn't have health insurance at the time. I was broke, and so I remember the show didn't cover it. I mean, because they just you never probably didn't it. acknowledge it during the fight. So like, well, how do we? No, know they you? were aware. I mean, it's oh. a compound fracture. They they know what's happening. Yeah, yeah they I, and they were like, don't worry, we'll take care of it. So I go to the doctor, assume it's covered. And they just never covered it. Never oh. covered it. Yeah. So I, I remember it. that fight ended up costing me like six grand. You know, because three grand, paid four grand. Yeah paid money to fight. There's so many stories like, oh, so many wow. people have stories like that where it's just a nightmare. Well, when me and Harrison sat down and talked about the different things, like, hey, like, you know, if we're going to get into this, how do we make it better? You know, because Harrison, you know, had a couple fights as an amateur, so like, you know, not only you know, a huge fan of the sport, but making it a better than just, you know, how, you know, Harrison made his money without the fight league never made it, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this wasn't his idea to get rich. It's like, well, I'm already rich. I'm going to try to make sure I don't get, become poor doing this, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Please. Uh, you know, so, you know, but legitimately, how do we make it, a, you know, a better event? And that's one of the things I talked about. I was like, hey, the, uh, taking care of, like, you know, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, right? This is things we're supposed to have as an American. And here, you know what I mean? Like, you know, life is your health. You know, and there's so many fighters, we've all done it, where we're injured in the camps. But we can't go get it fixed or addressed yeah. because it financially falls on you. Yep. So now it's something where, I, like I told us, hey, look, we're going to have better fights and probably cost less financially because of the fact that now a guy goes and he might have a, a tear or something that could be rehabbed or or something that could be addressed while it's small. It's like, hey, let's go ahead and get you while you have a cold. Yeah. Well, right now, everybody waits until they have the full-blown flu right. and they're on a fucking, you know, a breathing machine. They're like, okay, now you got to address yeah. it. It's like, well, man, this is going to cost a lot of money. It's like, you know, hey, let's fix your diet. Oh, well, let's wait till you have to have a quadruple bypass. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Like, well, there's different levels. And because of the way that we structure the healthcare, that they have it the minute they, they sign with us, 
when they have the bout agreement, they're ready to fight. All right, cool. You can train now knowing that if you get hurt You're in training, good. We got you. we'll take care of you. Yeah. And it might not necessarily mean you get pulled out of the fight. Yeah. You can now address the injury early enough that maybe we could fix it. Yeah, maybe it's something we can go through. Yeah. So now we get a better fighter for both sides. I want yeah. the fighters. I don't want guys going there injured. I know no. that's dangerous. More and then as a fan, even if you're just a pure evil fan, that just, <laughs> I just want to see the best guy fight the best yeah. guy. Like, well, then you want this to happen too, because you want to see the healthiest person yeah, of himself. You want to see some, you know, guy who's, uh, you know, shell of himself because yeah. he's got a torn, sh you know. How depressing was that to watch the fight with? And I don't know the circumstances of behind him. Dillashaw. 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 Oh, my shoulder popped out 30 times. I'm like, man, if there was a way we could have maybe fixed it before. And I don't know if it could have. But there's an example of watching I mean, a guy. I mean, think of Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. He had one arm. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao. Shit, one arm? Yeah, it's like. It's we paid $100 like, for that pay per view and the guy's compromised. Yeah. Like, God. That's damn. annoying. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, as a fight fan, you sit there and go, well, shit. Like, I didn't even see a fight. I just saw a guy who's half injured try to salvage himself because he had to and money he's or this. Beta, yeah. Okay, he's a warrior. He's going to go forward. And it's like, and, and I know some guys said, well, he shouldn't be doing it. And I'm like, eh, no, uh, that's no, not how that works, no, dude. Yeah. The mindset that makes that guy do that is not going to keep not him. Not the guy pulls out, yeah. No. But Harrison, there has to be a reason why other leagues didn't decide to go this route. Like, I'm sure it's been a nightmare trying to pull some of this off. Oh, yeah. So there has to be a reason why mm -hmm. these other major organizations don't offer health care. And I wonder if... Now that, I don't know the whole relationship or the structure of WWE partnership or ownership now by UF uh, Endeavor, bottom mm -hmm. both, I'm thinking they might now be required, and maybe they're about to announce it. The reason why, the reason why I'm able to do it is also the reason why I'm required to do it, is I own other businesses and have over 500 employees that as a large employer, I have to offer insurance to any employee that I hire. But that doesn't umbrella out to your, uh, all your other... Yeah, common ownership. Really? Yeah. Because with the UFC and the WWE, just so everyone's aware, those WWE athletes are independent contractors. Right. Well, that's how they've gotten away with it this whole time, um, that if you have all independent contractors and you technically have below a certain amount of W-2 employees, yes. you don't have to offer certain benefits. Huh. But... It's kind of a it's kind of a weird two-edged sword for this industry is because a lot of employers are like I want to stay under a certain amount of employees so they don't, don't have, have to. to. Yeah. Since I've already done it and, and so insurance carriers, you know, if you were to just this type of business, an insurance carrier would be like I don't want to touch that because they're such oh high risk, yeah. you know, people. But I already have the group plan with my parent business. Now that I have this new entity, that same insurance can't disqualify this business because I'm required to offer it. But to, I'm sure your 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 rate goes through the roof, right? It, it does. But the to have access to that ability that nobody else would have uh, insured, obviously the league will pay for that portion that's uh -huh. skyrocketed yeah. the whole group for plan. Sure. But it has capability which other companies e even if they paid triple the amount that I'm paying yeah, that I'm paying they would the they just wouldn't have the option yeah that's so interesting and so it's really kind of a cool thing that I think now other promotions don't have the excuse that oh we just can't do it yeah. the insurance carriers don't, well, allow don't it. Do it. it goes back to what I said about you to begin with Harrison didn't do this to become rich correct yeah I think you know I mean, let's face it there's a lot of promoters that are like hey you get to park a phantom in your garage <laughs> But your guy might not be. You can have guys that you know can't pay for their health care. You, yep. you know they're going to be having to you know work at a, a gym the rest of their life to pay their dues. Yep. You, know, you made money. I'm like, are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're more than okay with yeah. it. Like, oh, Most yeah, of them are. Hey, yeah. they should have done better. Yep. You know what I mean? Like they should have figured how to do it on the wrong. It's on them. It's their yeah. fault. It's on them. It's I'm on like, them. Wow, that's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. You know, they're not most CEOs are yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. That's what puts them in those positions. But most guys Agree don't, have, sharks. don't have, you know, Harrison's mentality. Be like, hey, I'm okay with making a little bit less if the people around me make a little bit more. I mean, you see a few businessmen out there that are that way. You know what I mean? It was like a great price and stuff. That's kind of yeah. the mentality. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, first of all, I mean, most guys at Amazon are like, hey, my guys, you know, I, I'm the richest guy. You know, I'm one of the richest men in the world. But my guys have to fuck a piss in a water bottle. Yeah. Uh, they those outliers. Yeah. Those outliers. Yeah, I don't like, think you get to that's that point. the mindset yeah. that makes you, you a billionaire. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I just, I'm glad that, you know, Harrison, is, you know, that's one thing he brings to the table. He's not trying to become rich off of, I mean, he doesn't mind money. I'm obviously, he's made himself. <laughs> yeah. But at the same wrong. time, I don't like, want to be in the business of losing money. But, right. Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, I don't think that was, you know, that's not, 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 that's not,
a company that's going to be something to be proud of and be like, what was the oh, sure. what was the most important Agreed. thing at the end of the day? The fiscal bottom number, yeah. or bottom line. It's like, well, okay, well that's the most important thing. Then fighters, you know, health and and, and their abilities. Yeah, changing the game. It's going to take a hit. Yeah. Like, so, or, or would you want to make sure the fighters can be happy about things, you know, and and have a very enriched experience and, and be happy about a company they're a part of? Then you might you might not make the same amount. You're, no, you I have I, to share more of the pie. Yeah, you're and okay I, I love that. it because you look at you know making a splash in the fight game. It's tough to do these days. There's a lot no. of leagues, but your splash, obviously Frank involved and Bella is a big splash. But the biggest splash is offering this, which is separate you guys. It really is the biggest. Every, oh, by far. Me and Bella. Nobody's fighting. done it. I'm happy about because it, it brings us a lot of attention. You know, I get to fulfill a dream that me and Bella talked about now. I'm like, hey, this might actually really happen. We might both be getting our hands wrapped and get to look at each other. Crazy. Like, you know, Bella's hands are going to be wrapped, you know, still from when she goes into my corner. You know, and yeah. vice versa. I'll already probably be wrapped up while I'm cornering my yeah. daughter, knowing that I'm fighting there. Man. But if that can also bring attention to the UFL and see all the things that, that we're doing there, it's like, hey, guys, this is great. This is only going to be, you know, this is a one-time one deal. Time you know deal. I mean? yeah. <laughs> but what can we now, what I'm shining the light on this, oh, yeah. what am I shining the light at? So yeah. we just another promotion that's just out there to try to, like, you know, fight. Might make it. Uh, you, know, you can't. Yeah. If you just another fight, you, know, you can't. Yeah, okay, I mean, it's one and done. This is over with. You know what I mean? It's a cool poster on the wall, a memory yeah. to talk about for me and Bella. But at the same time, like, I, I don't want that. I, that's only half the story for me, personally. Ha, right? Is there, have you guys announced, you talked about opponents for Frank? We, we have a couple that... Uh, you know, it gets. He actually has a couple. So he's like real best friends with Chris Angel, and Chris Angel has some. <laughs> so you want to fight Chris Angel? <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm training him right you now. You so kick his ass. ass. <laughs> well, I'm what, just I, what I meant was, but I think you'd whoop his ass. Chris, Chris Angel, <laughs> unless he has, disappears. Yeah. He has really great ideas, and so he's throwing out some some names that we're Chris like. Chris Angel has. Yeah, I won't say him, but we're we're all over the map. We're like Chris just, got his beginning too. Remember, you know. He was, Sometimes you have to have him on the show and talk to him. He's interesting. I'd love to have Chris. I'll let him know. Yeah, I'll bring him on and come on together. Yeah, but um, you know, Vince McMahon helped get him a start. You, me, and him, and uh, you and him on a fight campaign would be fun. Yeah, that'd be fun. Oh, he is such with Callen too. I wonder if he can do some like tricks. I'm ready to the point where I think his girl is gonna like, you know, like like flatten my tires so I can't show up. Yeah, because I train him probably about four or five times a week. Not probably. You guys are close. Oh yeah, I'm in his house four or five hours. Just in Cabo, five days weeks together. Yeah, you go. I'm going to Cabo. You got to come with me. You know, the wife's like. Oh, that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just you and him. Well, no, he goes, but he, he'll go, and then he, I, I come with him. You know what I mean? Because you're training him too. Right? He goes, I got to train while we're there. So yeah. <laughs> we were. We, and honest to God, he's obsessed with the shit. We were training, but we're also in Cabo, so you know, kind of heels and stuff. So like in between rounds of us, literally sparring on the deck. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, rounds over with. We're drinking like uh, <laughs> we're in drinking. Cabo. Yeah. <laughs> so sit so there. You know, round four and five it's like, all right, cool, man. Make sure I don't fucking lay him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. He did like a. He's really obsessed with Andy Hook's spinning heel kick, right? So like throw really? it, yeah. And, and, like, and I'm fighting a lot of orthodox now yeah. because of the shoulder and neck yeah. injuries and stuff. And just even though it's healed up, I just for a year I had to do it this way. I really enjoy fighting that stance, and because I train people so much, standing orthodox when I spar with them helps them out more than standing as a southpaw. Yeah. And he throws a spin heel kick. I mean, like literally, like I mean, like missed my testicles by this. Oh, I, was hell like, no. I was like, oh man, that would have been a shitty. Day. You know, yeah. Kind of going back to what we were talking about outside. We want to keep the brand as this is the future of legitimate MMA league. That's you know, everything. You we gotta, don't want to be a circus, you know. You don't so. want to be a one-off or do the, the, you know. You got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. and so you guys do it right, man. Sound. You made the splash with the with the health insurance, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I can't wait for your fight, Frank. I'll probably be there. Well, I assume I'll be there. Well, see Bella kicks some ass. Well. Who's going to commentate? We need to be there. We usually made the commentator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the commentator? Yeah. He was like, if the price is right. If there's <laughs> one to do it, it'd be that one. Yeah. yeah I love Fighting, you and you know how high Bella, I'm on Bella. Card, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people, are, people are complaining, like, this dude, he needs to shut up about Bella, man. I just hype her up way too much. During the yeah. other fights? Yeah. Still, like, I'm like, yeah, this fight's great. I'll tell you one thing I can't wait for. Can we get a camera backstage <laughs> seeing Bella get her hands wrapped, you know? But, yeah, I'd be I'd be totally up for that, man. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad we got this done, man. Uh, I'm excited. UFL's doing some exciting stuff, man. I'm, I'm proud to be around it. And Harrison, can't thank you enough. Thank Frank, you keep the doing the damn yeah, thing. Bella. We got to do the companion with uh, Chris Angel. Yeah. That's what we got to do. Yeah, I'll do. Fun. Bella's done with school in the middle of May, so if you want to oh, have her on I'll yeah. bring Bella back. So 100%. We'll just, we'll plan get, on we'll, it. Yeah, we'll get that fixed up. She's, she's actually was a little bit like, oh, you guys should be on the show talking about the fight, and I'm not going to be there. I'm all, 
belly. And, and she knows it's like her yeah. trying to get her away from school. She's a full-time student. No, she's taking pre-med classes. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. Do your thing. Wrestling right now. The U.S. We'll Open is uh, at the end of May, April, so, I mean, she's focused on that. Yeah, yeah. No, when she's ready, she'll open-door yeah. policy here for Bella, man. So, <laughs> appreciate you guys, man.